In this video I wanted to talk about functions and what a function is is it's a specific instance of a relation meaning that it's a specific kind of a relation where uh, each domain value is mapped only one time to a range value. Okay now this might seem kind of complicated but it's really not. And what it means is that for every spot along the x-axis there's only one y-axis uh, point. Okay, and uh, it might be easier to demonstrate just from using an example. Okay, so for instance, if I gave a line like this, okay, so the purple line here, um, what it, this would be a function. Okay, and the reason why is because if I were to be able to draw a line anywhere along the x-axis going up and down into infinity, um, it would only contact the relation graph one time. Right, so this line would only contact it once, and this line would only contact it once, and so would this one, and so on and so forth. Okay, this is true for a lot of different types of functions. Okay, so for instance, if I did one like this, okay, so a parabolic one. Again, okay, if I were to draw another line, okay, this would only, oops, not straight, this one would only contact the graph at one point, as with this one, as with this one, and this one. Okay. Now there are some that are not functions, for instance. Well, uh, let's take a look like a circle. Okay. A circle is not a function. Okay. It is a relation, but it's not a function. And the reason why is because if I were to draw a horizontal line, I would get a point here and also a point here where it contacted the relation. And therefore, this is not a function. Okay. There's lots of other ones too. Um, for instance, we could have um, part of a hyperbola. So it could be something like this. Okay, so a relationship like this. This would not be a function again because if I were to draw a point, a line like this, it would contact here and also down here. And therefore, uh, this is not a function. So that's basically what it means is that anywhere along the x axis, those are all the domain values, there's only one. Uh, it only gets mapped one time to a range value. Okay, now with functions we have a couple different ways of describing them. Okay, the first is uh, called a mapping notation. Now I have to say that the mapping notation is very rarely used as far as my, I know. Uh, I've never really used it very much in my life. I just kind of know about it, but that's pretty much it. Um, the way it looks is something like this. F um, colon x arrow y. Okay. Now what this means, or this part here. Okay. This is a colon, like a dot dot. Okay. It's probably poorly drawn there. Let me just clean it up. Looks kind of like an equal sign. Okay. So these two parts here means a function of, okay, now this just means x. This part means is mapped to y. Okay, and that's all that fancy thing means is that basically it's saying that x is is mapped to y in some relationship. Okay, um, this is kind of and like I said, it's kind of a weird, cumbersome way of doing this. Um, if people know where this is used a lot, then please tell me because I don't. Um, in in all my time ex and experience in university and studying mathematics and science, I've only seen this like it's just for learning, but I've never actually seen this used in everyday um, in well in as much as it's ever used. Okay, so the way that this would work though is that we have we might have something like this. So you have some function of x is mapped and it might be indicated by something like uh, 2x plus 2. And I have to keep my uh, equations small because I can only fit them on this type of, on this small little grid here. Okay, and again, uh, let's say for instance it gave a domain for instance and it might say like domain is the set of 
let's say negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. Okay, so it's just in this little set here. Okay, well what this would mean is that we wouldn't have a continuous graph, it would be discrete, uh, but it would only, only map for negative 2. So we get negative uh, 2 times 2 would be negative 4, plus 2 is, neg is just negative 2. So negative 2 and 2, or negative 2 and negative 2. Okay, so we get a point there. Yeah, for negative 1, it would be negative 2 plus 2, so it would just be 0. So we get a point there. Um, for 0, it would be plus 2. For 1, it would be 4. I have no idea why I drew this last line here. Uh, sorry, for 1, it would be 4. Okay, for 0 would be 2, there it is, sorry, I just, ma just made a little mistake there. For 4 and for 2, it would be 6. Okay, and you can see we have another linear type of relationship, although it's not continuous, and it's discrete only because uh, the domain is given as discrete uh, domains. Okay, uh, but basically that's how you would draw something like this. Okay, a more common version, and I'm just going to erase it as much as I can here. A more common way of describing functions is using function notation. Okay, now it's basically the same thing, but it says f of x. Okay, now this means function of x, not f times x. Okay, so this is a, a f some function of x. Okay, often it's described with an arrow, but uh, sometimes used well, sometimes use with an arrow and often use this equal sign as y. Okay, so this means some other thing. So y is a function of x. Okay, and basically what it means is that the ra range values are related to x in some way. That's really what it means, is that y is a function of x. So y, um, y is, is affected by x, okay, or determined by x. Okay, so what we might get is something like this. We might say uh, a function of x is equal to, let's say, uh, 3x plus 1. And let's say we just, uh, this is continuous, so that x is an element of the, of the real number system. Okay, so we got 3x plus 1. Um, let's see, for negative 2, it'd be negative 6 plus 1, so negative 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I'm just going to graph three points. I know this is going to be linear. Uh, for 0, it would be 1. And for 1, it would be 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I get these sets of ordered pairs. Now, if you don't know how I'm doing this, uh, then I would advise you to uh, look at my other videos. Okay, and so you get uh, not exactly this line here. You get a line like this. Okay, and so this would be the graph of this function. Okay, and you can see it's a function because if I were to draw a vertical line anywhere, I would only be able to contact the graph one point. Okay, another way is just using the y notation. Well, before I continue, actually, I should say that this f doesn't mean function. Okay, this only means this is the name of the function. Okay, so it just means some function of x. It's usually described as f, but it can be anything. It could be d of x, uh, g of x. Okay, it could be um, s of t or something like that. And all this, this would mean is that whatever s variable you have relies on t. Okay, so that s is the responding variable and t is the independent variable. Okay, that's all it means. Um, so they can really be anything you want. Okay, uh, the last one is uh, where we just say that y is equal to whatever value. So y might be equal to, um, in this case, the equivalent one would be 3x plus 1. And that's the same as saying f of x is equal to 3x plus 1. Right? Now this only applies if your uh, vertical axis is actually called y. Okay? So for instance, if this was a distance time graph, what we would have is distance is equal to uh, some function of time. 
All right, so because distance is responding to the time variable. Okay, and um, that's really it. Okay, so when we graph these, what we're doing is that we're just exploring, using a graph to explore the relationship between these two. And like I said, it is still a relation, it's just a special case of the relation where there's only one uh, range value for each domain. Okay, and that's really it for uh, functions. Right? Uh, in my upcoming videos, I'm going to talk about problem solving with uh, uh, functions and how we can use this uh, to explore different types of uh, solutions or explore different concepts. Anyways, once again, if you have any questions or if you would, um, if you have any comments, please put them in the comment box below or send me an email or contact me in some way. If you do like the video, give me a thumbs up and if you do like my channel, then please subscribe.